we're excited. We've got a lot of really great wearables here, like you said. Uh, the Forerunner 645 Music is our first wearable to add music on the device. So now you can leave your, you know, phones are very expensive these days. Now you can leave your phone at home. You'll have the music on your device so you can listen to whatever while you're running. Pair it with your earphones can flip the song you can do it from the device so that's really exciting um, we also have payment options on the device and so now you can have your credit card with Garmin pay synced up and so while you're on a run if you want to stop and get a water or coffee but you don't have your wallet now you can use contactless payments on the device too so we're very excited about the 645 it is uh, $400 without music we have an option and then 450 if you want to add music to it okay great and when will that be released at the end of the month all right, and then one other question that I had was what music services, like are there going to be any streaming music services that will work in conjunction with the 645 music? Sure, so they, we won't have streaming music yet, uh, but we do have a partnership with iHeartRadio and Deezer, so we'll have apps that will be on the device, and you can also download any of your purchased uh, music from your computer to the, to the device to have a, your own playlist as well. Okay, perfect. I think that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Now, in addition to those details, I did want to mention a couple of other details. The first one being the sizing. Uh, this device appears to be identical in sizing to the Garmin VivoAct 3 uh, in terms of circumference. Uh, and really, the appearance is really close as well. Uh, the one di difference or distinction is that it does appear to be a little bit thicker than the Garmin VivoAct 3. The Garmin VivoAct 3 is definitely a thinner profile. This has uh, just a little bit more thickness to the device over. Overall. This also does not have a touch screen, so you will have to use the five button configuration that Garmin has been using for all of their Forerunner and Phoenix devices. This does have the Garmin Elevate sensor. This is the same sensor that Garmin has been using on all of their latest devices, the Phoenix 5, the latest Forerunner devices, and the Vivo Active 3, and it does appear to be virtually flush with the back of the device, so it's not protruding. One other interesting thing that caught my eye was that this does not have the same charging port that has been used by Garmin on some of their latest devices. This is using the clamp-on style charger. That was a little bit interesting. And also the band itself. The band on this watch was very soft, a very, very soft rubber. Uh, you could actually fold the band in half, and that's a little bit different than what we've seen from some of other Garmin's uh, recent releases. So they're definitely going with a softer tech textured band. Now this does come preloaded with multiple sports profiles that you can choose to uh, track a variety of different exercises, but noticeably missing from this is that this does not have a triathlon mode, uh, and that is kind of a rare uh, a thing missing, I guess, from a Forerunner device. I'm kind of surprised that Garmin released a Forerunner device, a device with that Forerunner branding, without the ability to do uh, or have a triathlon mode. That, that to me, is kind of disappointing. But I guess they got to save some things for some of their more high-end, expensive Forerunner devices, and that's one of the things that they're saving. That being said, this is a decent offering from Garmin. If you're looking for a watch to track your exercise, your GPS, uh, your advanced running metrics like cadence uh, and pace and all of that kind of stuff and also listen to your music at the same time. So hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. More videos to come. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.